Howdy again everyone, and by popular demand, let's test the living daylights out of Fujifilm's premier macro lens for their APS-C X-System cameras. The XF 80mm f2.8 R L M O I S W R macro. It's supposed to have excellent image quality, it features image stabilization, it's only for Fuji's X-System cameras, and it costs an eye-watering $1,200 in the US, or £1,100 here in the UK. It had better be pretty earth-shattering to justify that kind of price. Macro lenses can bring you extremely close to your subject, and this one offers one-to-one -one magnification. The 80mm focal length is the full-frame equivalent of 120mm, which is pretty telephoto, giving you some working room away from your subject, and some potential for portrait photography too, particularly if you shoot at f2.8 for an out-of-focus background. As I mentioned, this lens has image stabilization, here's some footage with it turned off, and now turned on. As you can see, it does an excellent job holding your image very steady. As usual for any lens, it's less effective at close distances. Here it is at a macro distance, turned off, and now turned on. Well, at least it is helping a bit there. As I mentioned, this is one of Fuji's XF lenses, and it's made of high-quality plastics, weighing in at 750 grams. It's strangely big and heavy for an APS-C camera lens, a bit like its 90mm f2 cousin, leading some people to have speculated that it might have even been designed for some future Fuji full-frame camera. Well, who knows? It's actually even bigger than Canon's 100mm macro L lens for full-frame cameras, so it's really not a small and light lens, that's for sure. You get controls for image stabilization and the lens's autofocus range, followed by Fuji's customary aperture ring that clicks around nicely. Next comes a giant rubberized focus ring. It's electronically coupled to the lens's focus motor. On my slightly older Fuji X-T20 camera, the manual focus action was horrible, actually, being pretty jerky, as you can see here. Perhaps it's better on Fuji's newer camera models, someone tell me in the description. You can also see the lens exhibiting some focus breathing here, zooming in as you focus more closely. The autofocus speed on my copy of the lens was just okay, and you can hear the motor making a whirring noise as it goes, which will easily be picked up by your camera's microphone. It didn't like working in low light, hunting around a bit occasionally. There's a slightly bigger fly in the ointment though that bothered me. When the lens is detached from your camera, or your camera is turned off, the insides of it clunk around like crazy when you flip the lens over, in a dramatic way, which I've never seen on any other lens, absolutely horrifying. That cannot be a good design decision for long-term durability. I seriously hated it, feeling it wobbling about there. The lens comes with a deep plastic lens hood, which snaps in place quite confidently, and it has a 62mm filter thread size. Overall, well, I didn't exactly fall in love with its build quality, with its wobbly innards, jerky manual focus response, and oversized plastic body, a little unrefined really, especially for such an expensive instrument. Well, let's move on and look at image quality. I'm testing it on a 24 megapixel Fuji X-T20 camera. Straight from f2.8, the image quality is simply phenomenal in the middle of the picture. The image corners are just a little softer, but still very good, and contrast remains very high. If you stop down to f4 or f5.6, then you can see mild improvements that lead to almost perfect image quality. The image only begins to soften at f16, due to the effects of diffraction, and f22 is noticeably soft. Overall though, the image quality is pretty much beyond reproach, and this lens, as well as Fuji's XF 50mm f2, are the sharpest that I have tested on the system. Ok then, let's look at distortion and vignetting. These are corrected for you automatically by your Fuji camera, but if you shoot in RAW and convert with third party software, you can see the real performance. The lens projects a negligible level of pincushion distortion, although vignetting is pretty noticeable at f2.8, which is a surprise on such a giant lens. Stop down to f4 and f5.6 for those corners to really brighten up. Now let's see about close-up image quality, 
As I mentioned, this macro lens can take you down to 1 to 1 magnification. The close up image quality is just a tiny bit softer at f2.8, but still very good. Stop down to f4 for a nice increase in sharpness. That close up image quality stays this sharp down to f11, although if you stop down to f16, then softness creeps in due to the effects of diffraction, and f22 is pretty soft. Now let's see how the lens copes when bright lights get into the picture. We see some flaring and glaring, but only really when bright lights are directly in the image, so that's a fairly good performance for a macro lens. The Fuji 80mm f2.8 can give you some nicely out of figures backgrounds, so let's take a look at the quality of its bokeh. It's generally really nice and soft, unless you're working against a particularly busy background here, those images jump out at you really nicely. And related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration, the plague of almost all macro lenses. Looking close up, you can see some green and pink highlights before and after the plane of focus at f2.8. Stop down to f4 or f5.6 to see those colours vanish away. So then, overall, this lens has absolutely excellent image quality, it's bitingly sharp, with no serious flaws at all. As I mentioned, I wasn't a big fan of its oversized build quality. It's very well loved and respected in the Fuji community, but there's just no denying that it's pretty terrible value for money. 1,200 US dollars is not justifiable for any APS-C macro lens, I don't think, even one as good as this. If you have money to burn, I suppose I can recommend it to you, but there are plenty of far less expensive options for you out there.